Hi guys, my name is Simich and hold on a sec. Hey, I'm Spider Man. Okay, so why did I think that would work again? Oh, only because I had Spider-Man on the mind. And now we're going to talk about the amazing Spider-Man. Now I'll admit, when I heard that Sony was going to reboot the Spider-Man series, I was mad. I was like, come on, don't make another Spider-Man movie. Let Give the rights back to Marvel, let them do it. Let it, Spider-Man be part of the Avengers. And everything that came out, like every trailer, image, I was not thrilled about. But the sooner the movie got close to release, um, and with the good word of mouth coming, I got super excited for it. Hell, I got so excited that I, in one day, I read the whole Death of Spider-Man comic series. I don't know if these are all of them, but these are the ones I decided to pick up. The prologue, the actual death, and the fallout. Yeah, I'm a nerd. And now you're going to see me teleport them back to the bookshelf. There we go. Right where they are. Anyway, back to the movie. I'm so happy that this was actually a good movie because everything, well, okay, not everything, but most of the stuff I feared uh, did not come true. I did not buy Andrew Garfield, probably because probably because of the hair. Just the hair did not look very Peter Parker-ish. But like Mark Ruffalo, I had doubts, and he ended up being the best Peter Parker, same way Mark Ruffalo became the best Bruce Banner. In film, anyway. The lizard, I was not looking too forward to the lizard because the image, he looked he looked too silly. The face, at least. And he just looked too much like Lord Voldemort from Harry Potter. But in the movie, uh, he's actually scary, and Reese Eiffens is good as Dr. Kirk Connors. Emma Stone, who I love in anything, is really good as Gwen Stacy, and... It makes you wonder how they're going to handle the, her death in the second movie. For those of you who aren't comic book geeks, um, in the, Gwen Stacy um, was Spider-Man's early love interest, and I mean, I'm not spoiling anything in saying that she dies because it's is one of the most famous things in comics, right next to uh, Bruce Wayne's parents getting shot down, next to Captain America getting frozen in ice. So I'm not spoiling anything. So the acting is good. Um, the action scenes are good also. The drama and comedy is well done. And the 3D is really good also. Especially when Spider-Man's swinging through the city. It's really awesome. Especially the ending shot. So if you get a chance, I suggest you see it in 3D. But this movie isn't without its flaws. Okay, so I have two sections of flaws. One is just like fanboy fantasies and nitpicking basically and the other is kind of problems with the movie itself fanboy dreams be damned i wish this movie was connected to the marvel cinematic universe so it's connected to iron man thor hulk and captain america because i mean come on don't you want to see spider-man fight the hulk don't you want to see spider-man hanging out with iron man it would have been better because um for anyone who knows comics Richard and Mary Parker, Peter's parents, were actually S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. But I can see them changing Richard Parker to being um, a scientist and a colleague of Connors. But you gotta make changes to fit the situation or the legal issues. But that's, that's just a fantasy for me and tons of other Marvel fans. Which I hope happens one day. Hope one day hopefully one day before I die. Now, problems that I have with the movie that aren't really fanboy-oriented is that I said the comedy's really done well, and that most of it's true. Other times, it's real. It's not very funny, or it's kind of awkward. And there are some scenes that like kind of have awkward endings, but again, it's basically nitpicking. I don't really have any... It's not really a major complaint. It's just something that kind of irritated me. But that's me, what are you going to do? Out of every movie this year that I was going to see anyway, 
This was the one I was dreading the most. And I'm so relieved that it was such a surprise. I mean, it's not my favorite superhero movie. It's not even in my top 10 favorite superhero movies. But in my opinion, it's the best Spider-Man movie made so far. And so I'd give it four and a half stars and I liked it enough where I'll get it on Blu-ray when it comes out. Now, as much as I like this movie, I have to say, please, Sony, for all of us, just let Spider-Man let Spider-Man be in the next Avengers movie, please. Or, no, better yet, Disney. You have an infinite amount of money. Write a check. Do whatever you have to do to get Spider-Man back. You have to do this. Please, if you spent over $300 million for John Carter, then you can spend any amount of money for Spider-Man. But please, get him back. Disney, if you can't give them a check, then... Ha trade something. You don't need Song of the South. Give Sony Song of the South. You don't. E don't you don't need that. So, did you guys like the Amazing Spider-Man? Did you hate it? Did you not care for it? Uh, you know what to do. Comment in the comment box down below. So, you guys are probably thinking, well, he liked the Amazing Spider-Man, but what did you think of the Sam Raimi movies, Alex? I'll get to why I thought of those movies next week. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys at the next review. Don't lag! Stop lagging! I'm sorry, uh, this is probably outtake. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna leave this in the outtakes anyway, because my- Maybe it's not lagging on the clip, but I'll leave this in anyway, because... When I was starting to record, it's lagging, but the screen was lagging, but whatever.